guys, Bobby Hughes here with Hollow Point Firearms. I just wanted to bring you guys a little video update on uh, the H&R Project shotgun. All right? uh, I had mentioned early, in some er earlier videos that I was waiting on some parts to come in for the frame. I uh, got those parts in and uh, we'll go ahead and start putting the frame back together. I've done some research online and on YouTube and I haven't really found a lot about the H&R 12 gauge or on the, in this case a Marlin 12 gauge and uh, it's surprising because it's such a common shotgun I mean you can pick them up I know last year in gun shows they were everywhere they're a pretty popular shotgun um, so while in this video I'm not going to actually walk you through step by step on reconstructing the frame I will let you guys watch uh, as I put all the parts back together and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you it's pretty tricky alright the biggest thing is to get everything lined up properly and in there as it's supposed to be. Um, there's some, you know, tricks to it and stuff like that that you just kind of have to feel around with it until you get it back together. Uh, remember, like I talked about during the disassembly video, we use our uh, go online and find your schematics. All right, you can see on these schematics here, it shows how everything goes back in the frame. It's not real detailed. It doesn't tell you like what part goes in first and how this part goes and stuff like that. But basically, if you did, if you can't remember, you can use this to determine which way the parts face in alignment to the actual frame, and that'll let kind of give you an idea of how it goes in there. Also, two little little uh, scenes like this show how the um, the rising activator works. All right, and so that's nice to know too, so you know in what order you need to put things back together. But anyway, uh, I've already got the heat blooming done on that. And let's talk about that just for a second. I don't want to bore you guys with no action and just talking. But um, I, I chose to do, it was, a, you know, you've seen it before. It was polished. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, you know, explain a little bit on color case hardening. All right. Color case hardening is, it makes a beautiful color. All right. And I've, I've done some research on it. And the problem that you run into with color case hardening is if the steel has already been hardened and then you once again fire it and color case harden it, there's a chance that it's going to be very brittle. And this plays a lot into the carbon content in the steel and things like that. So it's a, a lot of, uh, of science in it. Um, and I'm not going to explain it all to you, but just be sure if you are going to color case harden that you know what you know, what the, the carbon content, what type of steel it is that you're using, has it ever been hardened before, so on and so forth. All right, a, uh, I guess, alternate way of getting that kind of look, it's not going to look exactly like color case hardening, but would be the heat oil bluing like I did. You'll notice on the frame, uh, when you see it, that it's got a little bit of tiger stripe in it. And I, the way I achieved that was by using uh, rough sandpaper and a file and uh, Chris Cop crisscrossing the patterns as I sand it. Instead of sanding, you know, on the barrel we go one direction because if you go long ways then you'll leave scratches in it. Well I kind of did that on purpose on this. So I would go one way and then I would go the other way and then back and forth and crisscross the sand patterns uh, and use a file to make a little bit more in detail marks and then once I degreased it and heat old blew it, blued it, it left it with a nice tiger stripe like rough pattern color and it looks really good and you'll see it here in just a second but I just wanted to throw that out to you guys so that you understand how that works
that, my friends, is how it's done. All right, so what we're going to do now, since it's all back together, is I'm going to take some of our linseed oil. Take a little bit of linseed oil. I'll just take the linseed oil and rub it in. Linseed oil is a natural protectant and it stinks, but it works really good to seal the metal. And if there is any rust, whoo, it's a little bit too much. If there is any rust left from the bluing process, it will deactivate. All of it. It was very hard to get in an hour. And so some guy came up with a steering wheel that slides out like that. He's got all the room in the world to get in. Now he deals with it. Drive it like this. Okay. This thing is kind of unique, so I can see it appealing to a lot of guys who are into customizing classic cars. So what do you want to do with it, man? Do you want to pawn it, sell it? I want to sell it. Any idea what you're looking to get? I think three. And I'm not paying 300 bucks, dude. I didn't mean an offer. I'll be like around 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. Can you meet me in the middle? 150 call even? Alright, man, no problem. Alright. Alright, guys, so now that we have this back together, uh, the, the frame, what we want to do is check to make sure that the barrel locks into the frame properly. Alright, so we're going to lay the barrel in here. And it locks in. And then the release, just like that. 